Oh, it's Monday night. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Sean. It's Monday night, 6.30 lecture night. And um, as folks are starting to join, I typically show up every Monday night. Last Monday was an anomaly. Many of you know that I had to head to Florida and uh, manage grandchildren because my son-in-law and my daughter both got COVID. Vaccinated, it was a breakthrough case, breakthrough cases. Everybody's exquisite. I came home last night. I'm just happy to be home. And um, thank you everybody for your messages and your prayers. You're so lovely. And I, I'm very careful about using the word prayer, not because I'm scared of the word, um, mostly because Project Forgive is non-religious. And um, I spoke from my own heart and what I do, and I do pray, and, uh, and ask for prayers for my family to be well and all that. And you guys are just exquisite. And the family's doing fabulous. It was hard to leave, and it was easy to leave. Because <laughs> 10 days alone with a 4-year-old and 11-year-old, oh, my gosh. Plus, they're in quarantine, so I had to do set structures for entertainment and food and chores and... Ooh, reminds me of being in the um, my single mother days when my children were little. I was a single mother. And uh, boy, what a lot of work. And just huge shout out to all you moms out there managing COVID, school, everything that you're doing, and dads um, during this pandemic. So I'm happy to be back. With that said, I thought I'd take on hodgepodge night tonight. So that means, I think I talked about it in the, when I teased this today, is when my kids were little, we had, we would have hodgepodge dinner on Friday nights, and that meant everybody could pick the food they were going to eat. So, you know, a big thing in my house was making tartar sauce, taking pickles and mayonnaise and making tartar sauce. That was my daughter's favorite thing to do, and she'd have fish sticks with her tartar sauce. And my son loved macaroni and cheese, so he might have macaroni and cheese, and maybe I would throw in a link cuisine or something, and we called it hodgepodge. So everybody got to eat what they wanted that was in the fridge, right? So uh, tonight's hodgepodge, meaning I've got a whole list of topics and I want to run them by you guys, see what you think, because I'm not going to do my normal lecture tonight, forgive, I just didn't have the bandwidth to get it done. So um, the topic that I was going to do last week that I had to cancel was called, it was about getting your emotional needs met. Yeah, getting emo your emotional needs met. I'm going to take that on for next Monday. Okay, that'll be the topic next Monday. And um, let me do a few announcements. I see you guys are showing up. Hey, hi, innocent Jeremiah, Jeremiah, how beautiful. I see you, Terry, it's great to see you. Thank you for that so much. And thank you for all your loving thoughts and prayers and emails. You guys are just freaking awesome. Okay, so with that said, let me do a couple of commercials before we get going. And commercials are easy. Join our Joy is a, Facebook, a Habit Facebook group. We have a Facebook group called Joy is a Habit. And we really believe making the um, making taking the unconscious and making it conscious, and one of those is the concept of joy. And um, you can tap into joy at any moment. I don't care how horrible life is. I don't care how much you're grieving. You can find moments of joy to give you a reprieve. And so, joy is a habit is all about joy. So, and anything I mention, I will put up all the links. Okay. Um, go see our swag. We got swag. We've got masks. We've got white ones and black ones. Kindness is contagious. I guarantee you when you get one of our masks, people are going to comment to you. They're going to smile at you. They're going to think it's so beautiful because it is. It actually spreads kindness. And especially at this time that we need them because some people are struggling with masks. Some people won't wear masks. Some people wear masks. You know, we got that whole thing going on with the masks. And, uh, and whatever you choose, I totally get it. It's up to you. I am a mask wearer. I am vaccinated. I'm a scientist. I really believe in um, in science. And um, and if I'm totally wrong and these masks were a joke and silly and dumb, I'd rather err on being foolish and let people say, I told you so. <laughs> and I say, okay, good, because I'd rather err on safety. I, that's me personally. Okay. So if mask wearing is your thing, we got some masks. We've got our uh, Project Forgive Essential Oil. It's Forgiveness Essential Oil. Let me show you a picture of it really quick. There, I'll do it right here. See if you can see it. Um, I'm giving one of these away tonight. It's authentic, pure, organic, um, therapeutic grade. It's exquisite. It really is. It may seem high when you look at um, our pricing. It's $27 on special. 
we barely make any money from that like very couple dollars maybe because we do free shipping and essential oils are really expensive and we had this made it has um sage in it, it has lavender in it yin yang in it um it's just just an exquisite pure therapeutic essential oils so if that's something that inspires you would love for you to purchase it and tonight i'm gonna give away the essential oil at the end of my lecture or at the end of my hodgepodge night Someone's going to win this along with a couple of masks, a white one and a black one. The only caveat is you must be in the U.S. to win. I apologize ahead of time, and I'll tell you how to do that as soon as I'm done. I'm probably going to go about 10 minutes or so and tell you some of the topics that we're looking at. Um, for those just joining, tonight's a little bit different. I'm, I want to get some feedback about topics. And here at Project Forgive, we play in the realm of personal and professional development. So how you communicate that fosters intimacy, that fosters creativity, that fosters connection and conflict resolution. And of course, my favorite topic, which is forgiveness. I think forgiveness is the highest skill set that you can master. I do, and that's probably why I started Project Forgive, because I do think forgiveness is, um, it really is a skill. It's, uh, it's a skill, <laughs> depending how deep the the pain that came your way, how deep the, the situation, how hurtful it felt, how betrayed you are. Forgiveness really is a process and it is a masterful skill. And with that said, um, we do have a workshop coming up in September. We're going to do it every other month until we get a sponsor for monthly. We're looking for sponsors, so if you know somebody, we're looking for folks like Salesforce or Calm, GoodRx. I love GoodRx. Do you guys know about GoodRx? Um, our health insurance, we don't have um, uh, prescription insurance. So I go on GoodRx.com and I get the best pricing. I find out where the best pricing is, whether it's at Walmart, CVS, Walgreens or whatever. I find the best pricing um, because I have to pay out of pocket for my prescription. So GoodRx is an exquisite website. I'll say it again, GoodRx.com, um, especially if you pay out of pocket for your, for your prescriptions. And I would love to have them play with us because we want to work with companies that we love and adore, that we think are amazing. And Salesforce is one. Calm, the app Calm. If you knew somebody at Calm, flag them to Project Forgive. We'd love to play with Calm. Um, anything that has to do with mental health um, or cancer screenings, we love supporting folks that do cancer screenings. So that's our wish list, okay? Um, the Apology Workshop is coming up. That's where we're looking for sponsors. We, we're, right now we're doing it every other month. It's an hour and a half. We did our first one in July, and it's an actual workshop. So it costs $6.99 to attend, and money should never be an option to stop you. If you can't afford it or don't have the $6.99, whatever that reason is, we have scholarships. There's so many people at Project Forgive that donate money, that provide stars, because the stars really help us in allowing folks to come for free to our workshop. And if you haven't done the apology, you'll never receive. It's an exquisite tool. It's actually what we are nominated a Nobel Peace Prize for. And it'll really help you move through some forgiveness issues and stuff that's lingering. And um, there's a format every month. We do the same activity every month with different ideas and different concepts to talk about. You'll be put in groups and talk to people. Um, so it's not like my lecture setting where I'm sitting here talking at you. Um, that gets lonely for me, although I can see you guys. I see you're saying stuff like, hi, Kathy, I see ya. Um, the Zooms, though, really inspire me. So that's coming up September 29th, and you can register right here on Facebook under events. The cost is $6.99, or you can go to our website, and if you are struggling in any way financially, email us for a scholarship, joy at projectforgive.com, joy at projectforgive.com. Everything I just said, I will put in the notes as soon as the, the, the live talk here is over, okay? All right, so with that said, next week we're going to focus on the lecture topic is getting your emotional needs met. I have a huge list. And what, how I thought I would do it is I have this list. I will put it in the notes too, so if I'm talking too fast, you can flag me. But if something resonates for you, um, say it in the note. Don't say, yeah, that one, because I won't know which one, because sometimes... The comments come maybe 30 seconds after I'm talking, okay? It's just not in real time. So if there's a topic that really resonates for you saying, ooh, 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 tell me, okay? But here, and here are some of the thoughts. And if you have a topic, oh, you guys are so sweet. 
<laughs> I get it, Nancy. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're right. There's nothing to apologize for. I'm just tickled you're here. You're so good. Nancy, obviously watched one of our talks on apologizing too much when we apologize too much. And, uh, you know, what are some boundaries around that? So that's really exquisite, Nancy. Okay, so I got a list. I'm going to start going through this list. That's what tonight's lecture is about. Um, so here's some of them. Giving yourself permission to grieve. I like that one. Um, the topic of life isn't fair. Forcing an apology. Creating consistency. And all these will come from a communication perspective and from a personal development perspective. Because that's what we do. We train in personal development, conflict, communication, discussions, and of course the conversation of forgiveness, which is enfolded in all of it. Um, uh, a lecture on comparisons. What you know? Where does it? Where does that come from in research? What does it mean? How can you stop doing it? Because I usually give some kind of tidbits, communication nuggets to help you when you're in a pinch. Right? <laughs> life isn't fair. Got it, Sandra. Because life is not fair, is it? <laughs> all right. Perfect. Um, Age-appropriate validation for children and grandchildren. Um, Validation is so important. And what's age appropriate for kids and grandkids? Um, I like this one. What bricks do you need to drop? Are there any bricks you need to drop? And how do you go about dropping them? Uh, what about when someone doesn't respond when you're reaching out? You know, what, at what point do you say no more? Or, you know, if you're feeling desperate, dumping that desperation stuff. What about the conversation of supporting versus saving someone? Supporting versus saving, because sometimes I get screwed up in that. I, I get in that place where I'm saving people, and it's like, no, I just want to support them. But I get, like, my codependency jumps in, and then I get over-involved. you ever been over-involved? It's very painful. <laughs> I was over-involved when I was in Florida with my grandkids. That's why I needed a break. So I'm not trying to make them do things the way that I do, right? Like accepting them, how they parent, accepting how they interact with their children and yeah you get it perfect you like the supporting saving nancy that's great brick droppage from with you nancy um communication to the communications you never want to say to your partner or your spouse i like that one <laughs> like yeah i don't even need to go there combating anxiety i am a i've gone in and out of anxiety my whole life and have gotten a lot of support around mental health and anxiety. I know a lot about anxiety. Um, stages of forgiveness. Go do another take on that, another pivot on stages of forgiveness. Mastering non-reaction. That's another one. Emotional dependency. Spotting a narcissist. I'm really good at that one too. <laughs> Rude people. Mastering intuition is, you know, how do you, what does the research say and what are some things or some actual tips and tools that you can use to help uh, ex accelerate your ability to use your intuition and to really listen to yourself. Facing fear, I love that one. Uh, coping with criticism, I'm with you on that one, Kathy. I'm so with you. Coping with criticism. Exploring distinctions between sadness versus depression. I have also experienced depression and I've also experienced sadness. Um, and I love the conversation of grief, sadness, and all that. Um, one of the things I decided this past week while I was um, with my grandchildren is that it's time to go back to grief counseling. Um, I know we all have our own grief stuff that we're dealing with. It's been a year and a half now since my mother passed. And very simultaneously in succession my dad my sister and my mom all died of three different types of cancer and um, I've done a lot of grief work and I can feel that there's still some really heavy stuff that I haven't addressed even just talking about it brings tears to my eyes so I decided I'm gonna go back into grief counseling with the hospice organization they have a zoom meeting like every two weeks and they have a live in person I don't know if I'll do the live in person yet and I'm clear that I need some more work on grief. I need to just release some of that because it feels really big, you know, especially with everything else that's going on in the world with the pandemic roaring back to life, with all the racial pain, all the political pain, what's going on in Afghanistan. Oh my gosh, there's so much going on, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm with you, Kathy. Totally get it. Um, here's more. When everything feels like a struggle, focusing on random joy. What about the conversation of regret? What about regret? Um, progress, not perfection. How do you find joy with chronic pain? Um, I haven't had a bout of chronic pain in a very long time. I would do, probably do some pretty heavy research on that one. Like, what are some things you can do to find some joy while you're experiencing chronic pain? How to really be honest with yourself. We talk a lot about um, making the unconscious conscious. Making the unconscious conscious. And part of that is how do you really be honest with yourself? One of the things I saw this past week with uh, not being around my husband is... Um, Boy, I'm hard on my husband, you guys. <laughs> I, uh, my biggest complaint is I don't like how he talks harshly to me. And one of the things, you know, because he might say like, turn off the light. I hate when people talk to me like that. But here's the thing. I started noticing and seeing, being honest with myself, where I was saying crap like that. So uh, I need to be more present to how I'm talking to my husband. Um, not that it's not, it's okay what, that my husband talks to me harshly. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's more complex than that. So I'm looking at where am I being with my husband with my complaint about my husband. Got it? Okay. Perfect. Honest with self is a good one. Okay, great. Thanks, Sandra. And just so you know, too, I'll go through all the comments after the lecture, too, to see what else was resonating for you. Okay. Um, all right. Grief during divorce, and I, what that would encompass is also family members like grandparents that lose a son-in-law or a daughter because of divorce, managing grandkids or kids with divorce. Um, we'll see where that one goes. Divorce conversation is a biggie, especially now during COVID, the stats are sky high that people being together with your partner 24 seven for some people is really causing havoc, wrecking havoc on marriages. So the divorce rate is really high right now. Um, suffering versus grief. Quit saying you're sorry. I did something similar to that. Feeling misunderstood. Permission to grieve, Mindy, I got it. Um, feeling misunderstood. Um, that was a constant complaint of mine for many years. I don't have that so much now because I've learned how to communicate in ways so I'm really understood. That's a great topic. I love that one. Dumping time wasters. Creating new perceptions around forgiveness, maybe. Finding courage when it just ain't there. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> Where is that freaking courage? <laughs> I need it right now. Do you know what I'm saying? So I like the idea of finding courage. What about when you don't know the answer? And uh, whether that's at work or with somebody you care about and you just don't want to say you don't know the answer, what do you say instead? Um, what about the concept of putting yourself first with self-care? Those just joining, I'm Dr. Sean from Project Forgive. Just going through a list of possible lectures upcoming. Tonight is a, tonight is a night on topics for upcoming lectures. That's what tonight is about. I got gotcha. you. I'm with you on that, Miss Kathy. Perfect. More calm, less stress. Embracing pain. What a concept. Embracing pain. That's how I see my going into some grief workshops is I need to embrace some of this grief. I need to embrace it and because what you resist persists. Have you ever heard that phrase before? And um, when you allow feelings to happen, that's when you get access and they float through you. And uh, perfect. Got it, Evelyn. Um, top, top parenting or grandparenting tips to build self-esteem. I'm not good at that one. Respect in the family. How does that show up? And when you're not feeling respect in the family, what do you do about it? PTSD, what it is and how to live with it, especially if it's you or someone you love. High pressure conversations at work. Um, let's see what kind of things are coming up for you at work around high pressure. Dealing with a forceful person. <laughs> like they're so persuasive, almost like they knock you over or they keep asking over and over and over again. I've had experience with that one. Um, creating flow, more flow in your life. Feeling shame with your parents as an adult. Feeling shame with family members as an adult. And how do you manage that? Because those are just triggers, right? Um, 
why some people can't love you the way you want to be loved and how to give that sucker up. Um, there's something powerful about giving that up that gives you a, an increased ability to love people who simply can't love. And um, yeah, what about the distinction between faith and hope? Faith versus hope, what are those distinctions? Um, giving up, taking care of other people's happiness. I love that one. Stopping self-harm. Um, I have a couple of self-harms that I do. I'll overeat. I also have a struggle with biting my fingernails. Um, that's an anxiety thing I've had since I was a little girl. And, uh, and how to stop some of those self-harming behaviors. Um, the art of self-acceptance. Letting go of, accept, excuse me, letting go of suffering. Oh, sensitive hearts, being taken advantage of. That's a great one, Kathy. Kathy, I love that. Yeah, forgiving an estranged child or sibling, Wendy, that is exquisite. I will go through all these and add them to my list. Um, detaching with peace. How do you detach with peace? Letting go with peace. Doesn't mean you don't care for them anymore, right? Um, surviving high emotion in the moment. Like when, some, when you're having high emotion or someone else is and how to like soothe yourself and calm yourself while that you're riding out that storm of emotion. Being true to yourself, dealing with it all, whatever that means. I put on here the lessons of the walking dead. I love the walking dead, okay? <laughs> From uh, a television theory or film theory perspective, there's so much going on in that television show. And uh, I don't know if I got any walking dead fans here. <laughs> uh, what about racial microaggressions as a white person that you need to know? I deal with that all the time at work. Like one of them is saying out loud to someone of color saying, I don't see color. Actually, that's seen as a microaggression. And um, yeah, that would be a great topic. I don't know if anybody would come or people, many people would come to that one. I love the conversations of racial microaggressions. Let me not speak that into the future. Racial microaggressions are a perfect, perfect conversation to have here on Project Forgive that helps us all integrate integrate racially. Um, even conversations like if so, whether someone's Mexican or Latino and or Indian and they're, the way that they articulate words is very easy to understand. I've really gotten rid of the word articulate from my vocabulary because one of the microaggressions that a lot of people of color don't feel good about is when you say you're so articulate or you're so articulate, like um, implying that you're from a different country, you're from a different background, it's shocking that you speak English. So I've really, really focused on deleting that from my vocabulary as an act of compassion and empathy, not because I have to or it's not like that. It's like, wow, I wanna be sensitive to people of different backgrounds and really hear what they have to say. Yeah, you're right, Nancy, everyone does see color. Just like me saying, you know, don't say I have blonde hair or don't notice my glasses. Yeah, yeah, Rach racial microaggressions, perfect, Evelyn, I'll do it. Um, it's one of my favorite topics and um, it's a very popular one in all the business stuff that we do. Okay, power of vulnerability, how to quit faking who you are and start practicing being really authentic when you're terrified. <laughs> Um, why pain is your best gift, and I really believe that. Grief is the most transforma transformational property that exists on the planet. When we look at stages of forgiveness, it goes uh, shock, anger, grief, acceptance, peace. Shock, anger, grief, acceptance, peace. Sometimes people have a hard time feeling anger and then stay stuck in anger, and then when the grief comes up, you don't grieve, you actually shift into suffering, like lamenting the topic over and over and over again and not actually grieving it. And that's why I'm deciding to go to a grief um, group because I'm lamenting on the grief. I'm not moving, I'm stuck again, I can feel it. Yeah, I'm with you, Maria. I'm so with you on that pain as a gift. Giving up walking on eggshells. Yep, and the, the thing pain, more pain, what you're saying, Nancy, it's more, here, let me shift my butt, sorry. It's more about the pain is already there, it's moving through it, embracing it and moving through it. That's really what that conversation is about. Um, noticing what you didn't notice before. That's what I've been doing this whole past week about my husband and all that. What about the notion, oh good, so a lot of these are hitting home for you, Sandra, that means a lot to me because you're a good pulse for me 
for what people will like on Project for Gifts. So I really appreciate you for that. Um, giving up being right. You want to be right? You want to be happy? Right? Giving up your right to be right. Why the past hurts so much. I love that conversation. Uh, I'm an incest survivor. I come from a lot of abuse. And um, when you don't deal with your past, it compounds like interest. And the more work you do about completing some of that past stuff, grieving some of that past stuff, you're not as triggered in the present. So that's a really good topic. Um, finding yourself in a very busy family situation. How do you find yourself through busyness? Distinctions between love and codependency. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm even wondering too, Kathy, while you're saying this, what if I just did a topic just on incest, dealing with incest? Incest is so insidious. Um, I use incest to embrace child molestation, whether it's overt or covert, because some of us grew up in homes where we were exposed to pornography, so we weren't actually touched. It wasn't um, overt, it was covert or there were sexual innuendos made at a very young age. There's, there's a lot of pieces around sexual abuse and I'm thinking um, that might be a great topic. I can, do consider myself an expert on incest recovery. Um, let's see, strategies for worrying less. Forgiving those closest to you. You know how the, the, the stuff compounds? I'm thinking of my husband, okay. And it's like, if I don't forgive some of this crap, you know, we're not going to be very happy. And sideways anger comes out, right? Um, fear of failing. Done a lot on anger. What is an empath? What, what is your superpower and what's some best ways to navigate being an empath? Um, how not to play it safe. I like that. What about love languages? Um, I love the work five love languages. I can't think of the author's name. If you can think of the author's name, throw it in there. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, for those just joining, we are merely going through the list of lecture topics that we'll cover over the next year or so. And I'm just throwing some ideas out and um, uh, to see what feels good to you guys, okay? Uh, dumping excuses, getting out of your head and into your heart, real permission to be happy. Like, that is a skill. <laughs> um, what about rituals that feel good? Um, noticing triggers and managing them. Dealing with conflict. Um, getting no's. How to get a no, rejection, and then move on to what's next, whether that's career stuff, whether that's looking for a partner, whether it's getting, you know, rejection in family systems. Okay. Deepening intimacy. Power of affirmations, especially the phrase I am. Um, finding what you want. What is your mindset? How do you know what you want? Getting through a hard time and the whole conversation of this too shall pass. Feeling too much? How to protect yourself from extra pain that's not yours. I've got some great tools for that. Um, grief after a cheating partner. After cheating. Teaching your children boundaries or grandchildren. Um, usually, you're not, when you're teaching boundaries, you're also learning them yourself, right? Because most of us never learned what boundaries were or how to create them or how to do it in a way that fosters intimacy rather than out of anger. Because many times people set boundaries out of anger. That's really not the goal of a boundary. The, the, the goal of a boundary is to bring you closer. <laughs> not like when they've done the same thing 17 times and you're so mad you're screaming at them. It's like when, they, when it happens one, two, or three times, that's when you're still... Um, accessing <laughs> um, your your heart center and your head center rather than your amygdala brain, right? Uh, amygdala brain is your lizard brain. That's a part of you that reacts like if you touch the stove and your hand pops off, like instead of being so reactive. Let's see. Forgiving others and their bad choices. Losing a friend, whether it's through death or politics. I've lost some friends through politics. Um losing a friend, however that looks for you, um, how to stop giving advice. One of the worst things you can do in an intimate relationship is give advice. And how do you stop doing that? How can you really be there and foster intimacy? Oh, Ruth, I'm so sorry about your friend. Yeah. 
Yeah. I love the conversation, giving yourself permission to cry. Actually, Joyce, I'm going to add that right here. That's a good one. I'm just typing. Is it giving yourself here. Let me sit down. The, well, no, let me do it one hand. Giving yourself permission to cry. I love that one. That's what I'm in the midst of right now. Um, accepting change. Effective apologizing. I got some great tips and tools on that. Upgrading your marriage or relationship. I'm constantly doing that. Oh my goodness. How about embracing negative emotions? Um, I really don't see many emotions as negative. I see them as emotions. Anger is a very positive emotion when you can move through it appropriately and deal with it. Because anger is your, your body's warning system. If you're angry, your body's saying, hey, something's wrong here. And is that a negative thing? I don't think so. Culturally, we see anger as negative because we see it as violent. That anger means violence. No, that's just, that's just a very black and white way of looking at something. Anger is a very cool thing. Yep. I love that, Nancy. I'm with you. I can deeply relate to being miserable <laughs> for a long time, too. Totally get it. Okay, let's see. One, how about one just on emotional intelligence? Letting go of judgment. Things to say to a survivor of sexual assault or things to say to someone who's deeply grieving. Because, you know, the worst thing you can say to someone that's really upset is, oh, let go and let God. No, 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 don't do that. You could do it, but it doesn't foster intimacy. It doesn't foster deep connection. It's a cliche that people say that doesn't foster deep, deep, deep conversations. And that's really the game, to be close, to feel loved, to be loving, to love back, to have really authentic conversations, right? What about forgiving political fighting? I've got, there's lots of layers to that one. And um, I've got really strong boundaries with family about political fighting. And um, that might be a good one. How do you forgive some of that political fighting? How do you set boundaries around it? Um, letting go of control. That's a good one. Listening. Stop stressing over little things. Those just joining, I'm just going through a list, which I will put up as soon as this little lecture is over. Oh my gosh, I'm talking way too long. Um, there's a lot here. Signs that it's time to let go of relationship, owning how you feel, picking a counselor, a therapist. Stopping an ongoing, never-ending argument. I've had some mastery around that puppy, I'm telling you. Um, creating an attachment, getting clarity on your needs. Okay, so you got the gist of it, okay? And uh, you got the gist of it. So I'll put that list up here in a second. Next week, we're going to be talking about getting emotional needs met. That'll be the lecture next week. So for those just joining, forgive. I've been out of town, Did not was not able to um, get a lecture planned for today because I just came in today after being gone for 10 days with um, taking care of grandkids with parents with COVID. So... That's what's been going on for me. So, lecture next week. Someone's about to win a prize. Who wants to win? We got forgiveness mask, black one, kindness is contagious forgiveness mask, white one, and we're giving away our project Forgive Essential Oil, which is exquisite, exquisite, exquisite. Let me see if you can see it. There we go. It's backwards, but you get it. It really is delicious. It really is awesome. So, who wants to win? Yay! And um, let me figure out the, the parameters to have you win tonight. You must be in the United States. I'll apologize in advance. I'm so sorry. We ship only to the United States. Unless you purchase on our website or here at Facebook, we let you know what the shipping costs are. Most of our stuff is free shipping, I believe. Not all is free shipping. So we ship for free, low cost here in the U.S. So the prize goes to someone in the U.S., okay? Here's what I want you to do. You're gonna put a heart in the comments, you know, just put, like put a heart in the comments, not having a heart floating, but in the comments itself. And let's say number 12, lucky number 12 heart is the winner tonight. US only, masks or forgiveness essential oil. You can start throwing in those, um, those hearts in the comments and I'll count them out, out loud. I'm just looking for those hearts. Two masks and forgiveness essential oil. So it takes like 30 seconds. Terry, you're number one. I'm gonna count out loud. 
Evelyn's number two. We're going up to 12. Kathy's number three. You can do it as many times as you want. You can win as many times. Ruth, you're number four. Terry's number five. Who wants to win it? Kathy's number six. Olivia's number seven. You need to put the hearts right into the comments. Olivia's number eight. Christina's number nine. We're going to number 12 for the hearts. Kathy's number 10. Terry's number 11. Next one's a winner. Next one's the winner. Let's see who it is. Terry, it's you. <laughs> Congrats, Terry. <sighs> okay, Terry, so here's what you do. I know I probably have your address. You've bought stuff. You've, I, you've, you're amazing here at Project Forgive. If you would make it really, really super easy for me and message me here on Facebook, I can grab your address and get this out in the mail to you tomorrow, okay? Our other request too, when you do buy our products, give us reviews. We need reviews. Um, if you can like spend two minutes and write a review on some of the products you've gotten, that would be just delicious and it would really make a difference for us too. The other thing you can do, anything you share on Project Forgive, it makes a difference for us. It makes a difference for our corporate partners because the more you share us, the more people we reach and the more inspired our sponsors are to pay for programming and support us in doing the work that we're doing, okay? So that's it. I will put up the link for next week. There, was not, there wasn't one tonight. So uh, getting your emotional needs this next week. Big love, everybody. Adore. I will see you very, very soon, okay? All right. I love that people are congratulating Terry. That's awesome. Okay. Big love, everybody. Bye-bye.